Hey, how you doing? So welcome to this week's One Image My Edit. This week I'm going to be showing you a real quick, easy and simple process of extending backdrops. So if you're ever shooting in a studio, sometimes you can be working in quite small proximity. So it might not necessarily be a studio, it could be someone's lounge, it could be someone's bedroom. Whatever scenario you're in, working in a small confined space can sometimes mean that you have to actually shoot wider to get the whole of the model in. So you end up actually getting the sides of the venue that you're in. So it, this is quite a common thing that happens. So I'm going to show you a really quick and a really simple technique that you can do to extend this background. And I'm also going to show you the new feature that's coming to Photoshop 2022. Um, which is the crop tool and it allows you to actually use content aware to extend the image out. So the first thing you want to do then is come up to your layers panel, just press command J just to duplicate the background or you can right click and then select duplicate layer. So once you've done that, you want to come up to here and select the rectangle marquee tool. And all you want to do is select an area just on the top here. So I'm going to click across and drag down all the way to the bottom there. So you can see we've got the marching ants and that is gonna be our selection. So we can then use either the short key, which is Command T to transform, or you can come down to here and select free transform. And what we're gonna do now is click on the little box here and just start dragging. And you'll see that the background is starting to move out. So I'm going to do it to about there. I'm going to press enter and then I'm going to press command D. Okay. So that D selects everything or you can right click and then select D select. And then we can come over to the other side and do the same. So I'm going to drag all the way down, select an area. And then I'm going to come up to here and go to edit and then come down to free transform again. And then I'm gonna click on the box and again, drag out. So I'm gonna drag it out to about there. I think that's that's pretty good. Bring it in a little bit maybe. So this time we're gonna press the tick button. So there's multiple ways of doing the same thing within uh, Photoshop and Command D to deselect. So you can do it that way as well. So there's a few short keys that you can use there. So now we've started to extend that background. We've actually got a really good selection there where you can see that we've pulled this out quite a bit. Now we could carry on doing that and extend it out and of course extend it up. What I'm now gonna do is let AI take over a little bit. So I'm gonna click on the crop tool and I'm actually gonna pull this in to there and then on the right hand side I'm gonna do the same, just pull that in a little bit and then at the top I'm gonna to pull that down just a little bit. So we've actually filled the whole screen. Press enter. And that's now given us a really, really good area to work with. So we've extended that out a little bit. But if we come up to the crop tool here, we can see the ratio is is uh, is clear, so I can do any anything I want. Uh, you can click on clear, and that will actually get rid of any ratios that you may have set. But the new feature here is this here, where it says content aware. If you click on that, and then just draw a box over your image, and then decide how big you want the image to be. So we may want to extend that there. We might want to extend this at the top here and we may want to extend that down to here as well. So you can see there, we're going to be extending that quite quite a bit. So there we go. So we then press enter. What's going to happen is, is that the new AI feature is going to start extending that background for us. And you can see that it's done a pretty good job. It's extended it out. There is a few, um, the discrepancies here and there that we would probably need to address just to clear up a few things but it's nothing that's really really difficult so if we wanted to clear up this background and, and you know start just addressing some of these shadows we've got multiple tools that we can use spot healing brush tool we can use the patch tool we can also use the clone stamp tool as well so I'm going to use the patch tool and all I'm going to do is draw around one of the shadowed areas there and just drag up and let go and then click away and it will fill in that area. And the reason why I'm using the patch tool is because it uses texture 
and texture is really, really good because this background has actually got a little bit of texture in it. So again, select that area, drag down, let go, and it automatically fills it in and we can click in another area and we can continue doing that. So let's do it over here as well. And let's just drag it to there, let go, click, and there we go. We can start to see that we're actually starting to fill out these shadows. So same again, just drawing around, click and drag, then let go, and it's already filled it in for us, click to deselect. So you can see there it's doing quite a good job. And we can quickly fix any issues that we come across. So we can come up to here now, click and drag, up here, click and drag. So this is a really, really simple and easy way to extend them backgrounds. And you know, working in, in small areas is something that you, sometimes you just can't avoid it. it you know, whether it's a client's place or, or if it's your studio or even like I said earlier, like a, a, a setting or, or a venue, sometimes you just can't help but actually having to get some of the rest of the room or the area in. It's impossible. So yeah, this is a good way of just solving that issue. So we can continue just to tidy up any shadows that we've got here. Um, I think that would be pretty acceptable there. I think that would be okay. Um, if we wanted to make this a little bit more presentable, then we could just come up to here where we've got object selection and Photoshop is actually automatically select the model for us. You can see that's made a really, really good selection for us. So we can on there, we can say, well, okay, we've selected our model there. You can see that is our selection. So if we mask this, if we couldn't at the bottom here and just click on mask, then you can see that we've, we've automatically got a cutout there you could see. So if I invert that, you can see what's happened now. So all I've done is press Command I to invert that. So you can see if I press that again, that will go back. And there you go. So now what we can do is just tidy up this background and we can do that by going to Filter, Blur, and let's go to Box Blur. And what we can do is just slightly blur out that background if we wanted to. So by doing that, we can just get rid of any details and any problems that we've got. So about 10 pixels, something like that. There you go. That's that's quite good. Um, and then let's go to filter, blur, and we can also add a Gaussian blur as well. So that can help as well. So there we go. And now you can see there that it's actually just softened the background out a little bit. So if we come back up to here where we just before we select the subject, you can see there's a few little shadows and discrepancies there. So just by blurring them out, it's just smoothed it out a little bit for us. So if we click on the camera and then come back up to the layers, you can see there that that was our original. And then just using that techniques, it's just extended that background out for us. And you can see that it looks fairly real as well. I mean, if you look at the actual shadows on here, then you can see that actually that there are sort of four point shadows. So even though we've got rid of them, they were actually in the original shot. But you, yeah, you may want to just shorten them a little bit. But yeah, I love this new update from Photoshop with that extended content aware crop tool. But just using the marquee tool there, rectangular marquee tool, and then the transform is just a great way to extend it out. Um, so you've got lots and lots of control there. Once you've finished, if you've got layers like I have here and you're finished, then you can either um, merge visible, merge down or flatten image, depending on what you want to do. If you're totally finished, then just flatten the image and then you can go to file, save a copy, and then you can save it wherever you want and whatever file format you would like to save it as. So I hope that's helped. I hope you've enjoyed that. It's a real quick video, but it's a handy one. It's something that I think everybody could actually get useful. So I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.